It's that time again. What's up, everybody? This is Dad's Land and Fab. Hope you enjoy the show. Deuces. Boom. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another show of Dad's Lads and Kebabs. We apologise for Mickey's dog shit t-shirt that he's wearing today. He must have got that from a charity shop. But we apologise. We don't wear Excuse- that shit on here, my friend. Excuse me, top of the league. Fuck you. Oh, God, Three here games he goes. Today. He's one of their knobheads. He's top of the league, isn't it, mate? You alright? It's coming home. It's coming home for the Arsenal. Excuse me, I'm not, I'm not an England fan. I have more fucking expectations. <laughs> You've got more faith. More faith in fucking England. Hey, how you doing, my friend? I'm all right. I am good. Oh, got a nice, nice good. bruise on my leg. Oh, some skin, dominatrix again. Skin disappeared. Scrapage. What you done? And a bruised hand. Uh, oh yeah, dominatrix. Yeah. So that whipping. <laughs> no, I was uh, I was mowing today and I fell backwards into a grave. <laughs> <I hurt. laughs> it wasn't an open grave like a hole. It was. Uh, oh no! Okay, that would have been that was, that would have been funnier. But no, it wasn't. If you if you <laughs> if you, you, guys. If you would have fell into a six foot hole. And you were just led there, as you would be. You just fell, and all of a sudden, just ended up like this. <laughs> and you'd looked up, you'd think, wow, this is a shit day. This is a shit day. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of the, one of the experience, it's kind of one of the experiences that you don't want until you're dead. <laughs> you know, just to be, uh... No, being, being in a grave is very, it's quite weird. It's very daunting, to be fair. I imagine it is. How are you supposed to feel knowing that that's it? That 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 is, you know. Because the thing for you, do you think about every person that you dig for? Because you don't know them, you don't know anything no. about them, you don't even know who they are. Like, but at the same time, you know that you're digging this hole for somebody that's no longer with us. Before I started the job, I would say yes. Like every every funeral is upsetting. It's you feel sorry. You obviously do feel sorry for the people and the families that are there and the, the person that's died. But to be fair, it's there's like two things you think about. Is it a backfill? Are they doing it or are we doing it? If we're doing it, they need to leave, get out of the way, so we can do our job, clear up, tidy up, put flowers there, job done, make it look really nice. So. Unfortunately, it is just like a job. As horrible as that sounds, it is. It's like a job. Mm. It is your job. Oh, so, I'd imagine for anybody that has a job in that field, you know, like a mortician, you know, or do you know what I mean? They, they do that become quieter, just. No, it is just just another just person. Work. Unfortunately, you know, and that's not being horrible. <laughs> Who do you think's out there, right? Off topic, who do you think's out there who fucking loves their job? Who loves going to work every day? Um, If somebody was like, they fucking... Like, I get it if you're an F1 driver or you're a fucking football player or something like that, but general job, I'm just talking a general person that has a job where they fucking love it. I suppose it depends on what your interests are. Traffic wardens. Oh, but I hate Better that. Better traffic Get fucking beat up every day. <laughs> Isn't it? They're just so... Just, oh, God. The, the smile on their face when Who's they more ha- ticket on. Oh, you It's dickhead. one minute past the time and you see I... that, that lady running with all her shopping bags and it's like, ha ha, fuck you. Here's your ticket. Here's your 60 I got one. I got one as I was in the car because I, I turned around in a taxi rank. Okay. Because I came from the opposite, I came from the opposite side of the road, turned around into a taxi rank, and as I got into the taxi rank, it was empty. There was no taxis in there, oh. right? I literally just pulled up, and I was waiting to pull back out because it was quite busy. Yeah. yeah. And as I was waiting to pull back out, he came along and went. Phew! I was like, oh, I lost it. I fucking lost it. I was like, what are you doing that for? Like, you're, you're, not you're, like, you're not parked. You're not. 
I said, that's what I said. I said, literally, I'm going. I said, I've not, I've not, I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm not getting out. I'm literally just waiting for a safe part so I can pull out. Yeah. No, no, you, you pulled in. You pulled in. You was waiting here. I'm not. I'm literally driving off. Nothing. I can, and they always say nothing I can do now is done. Wow. Fuck. I had to pay it. I had to pay it. Yeah, there's there's no words for tax um, traffic wardens. I'm afraid. You're a you're a traffic warden. You're a cunt. Traffic wardens definitely didn't get what they wanted for Christmas. Is all I'm going to say. <laughs> no, they angry, didn't. just definitely built not. up, built they up, definitely. angry. They definitely did not. They're the kind of kids that, when they're playing someone at FIFA, they smash up the controller when they get beat. <laughs> or they're online playing somebody and they're losing and they, and they turn their internet off and the other person's like I just want to finish the game and I'm beating you I used, I used oh, to do God. that to be fair I used to do that on FIFA if I was losing before just before the game finished I'd, I'd leave the game and exit <laughs> so they didn't get their Would you remember on the or win <laughs> on the original PlayStation the silver one the silver PlayStation yeah number where one, you, yeah. if you just press the if you just press the button the lid would just lift up so the game would yeah. just stop. I used to do it to yeah. my, I used to do it to my brother all the time. I used to just walk out and press the fucking thing, so the game would stop <laughs> halfway through. And the thing is about PlayStations back in the day, if you didn't have a memory card, nothing got saved. Yeah, you said the, oh, okay. the little so, memory card slide in, wasn't it? The little external. Yeah, but I, I used to lose them all the time because you, there was a slot inside each game for them. Yeah. So I would put it in a game, lose that game, and then lose the memory card with all the other stuff on it as well. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this week, start of this week, this part of the show is called "Am I an Asshole?" Okay, All right. and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to go through opinions. If you think I'm an asshole, I'm a dick move. So Sunday just gone, we went to the uh, lovely Costco for some essentials for the house. Okay. Turns out you should never go to Costco on a Sunday because it is absolutely rammed. Nobody can get in the car park. No one's getting out. You've got a queue to get into the store. You've got a queue to pay. You've got a queue to get food. It's a long journey. All right. If you're going to Costco, plan about three or four hours on a Sunday weekend, I'd say. Yeah. So we got into the car park. We, we queued for about 10 minutes to get into the car park. As we got into the car park, we then was queuing even longer for basically to find a space because, you know, there's like 60 cars waiting. Everybody's in the shop. So you're waiting for somebody to come back out and get in their car. Yeah. However, <clears throat> it's kind of like a snake system. So you get in, you go down, turn left, go up, go down, turn right. As soon as everybody got into the car park, they all just went left, right, up, down, everywhere. Decided just to make <laughs> their own little rat race just to try and find a space. Anyway, I, ha I had a space lined up. Right. A space lined up. Anyway, pulled up slowly to it. I could see the person just putting their trolley away. Okay. Someone else fucking nabbed it because then another car came down as I was trying to move out. So I thought, fine, let it go. <sighs> anyway, it happened to me. It happened to me t twice. I thought, I'm pissed off now. I'm pissed off because I've waited for two spots and not got them. So I turned the corner, go back round near the front of the store. If I would have got a spot in this space, I thought, do you know what? This is like a, this is a top tier spot. It's a boss spot. I'll be fine. Anyway, I thought, fuck it. I'm just going to wait. I've seen a couple walking up to their car. They haven't even, they haven't even unloaded yet. They've got kids. They've got a trolley full of stuff. They're just walking to their car. They pull up and I thought, I'm having that spot. I don't care what happens. I'm <laughs> doing it. Because I don't care. Literally pulled up, cars behind me, started off like two cars waiting. Three cars waiting. Give it about five minutes. By the time this couple have unloaded, there's about 20 cars beeping. Just beeping the ones. I fucking just slap. I just slam my anchors on and I was waiting for this spot. I was like, no, fuck them. I'm having it. Fuck them. I just thought, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm not, I'm not waiting anymore. And honestly, got in, the, got in the spot. But the looks I got as I pulled in off everybody was just, yeah, it was unreal. Fuck you, Mr. Bean. <laughs> but does that, make you, does that make you does that make you an arsehole like I had two chances people stole them from me so I just retaliated but I'm done waiting I'm gonna fucking wait you won't get you won't get anything in this world unless you take it 
nothing is given anymore so you got to take what you want if you can get it so no i would i've done the same i'd have been pissed off after the first one to be fair so i just noticed that people like especially i don't know if it's just costco in general but my perception for costco now has just completely changed that people are so angry from the entire process like we we get it everyone's going there for cheap water cheap toilet roll and a load, <laughs> a load of shit they don't a load of oversized shit they don't need right? we, we get it <laughs> no, but yeah. well if tiktok shop had a shop it would be the same okay but basically you i got in the store and everybody basically everybody runs over to like the hot counter where they do like ribs rotisserie chicken they have a whole oh, yeah. bakery section mm. all right and people are just fighting over it they're just literally fighting over shit food basically it's not taste there's no taste to any of their food it's it's, it's just is it cheap cheap oh, like you can buy do you know you can buy like those proper american style birthday cakes which are like this big yeah, yeah. for a tenner the map, oh, like wow. It's proper shit stuff. It's to some of it's all right. The ribs are lovely and the chickens are really nice. However, people are just angry. No one says, excuse me. Everyone's barging past you. My ankles got hit three times <laughs> just from walking around. Trolley bashes. Just, it, it, honestly, it fucking boils my blood to think that people are so rude. Now, I've never been to Costco. Firstly, where is it? The one you go to? Is it Milton Keynes? I go to Milton Keynes, yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, I, I've been to our local equivalent of Booker's a few times before. Mm. Nothing imagine, like, but yeah, it's nothing I like. imagine it's, it's quite similar. The same sort of thing anyway. Big, bulky items. It's... Supposed to be cheap. People with massive metal trolleys bunging all shit on for, like, businesses and family oh, belts. I'm going to take you, man. I'm going to take, take you to Costco. Yeah, please. It's do. nothing like, honestly, it's, <laughs> it's nothing it's nothing like bookers, bookers man I'll, okay we'll we'll go we'll go it's a day out it's, honestly it's just the thing is with costco everything's bigger everything is bigger and you don't need it like so we bought we bought a crate of water right now a crate of water has got 64 bottles in one crate wow and but for a crate of water of 64 bottles it's yeah. three pound 50. wow that's cheap exactly that's really good exactly how so long does go, that we... last you on average we buy two crates and that'll get us that yeah that'll that'll probably get us just under a month oh wow so for about seven quid you're laughing yeah and because we don't it's our drinking water we drink it because i i fell out i fell out of brita filters because they've gone up in price like everything do you drink do you drink tap water yeah i i used to i used to but my, my wife doesn't yeah. um never has because where she grew up in yorkshire yorkshire the water was like the water the water the, wa the, the water ah, as they call it water. water it was like contaminated or so they thought well but in my eyes the water should be better up there they have a lot more small valleys and all sorts of stuff more rocks. anyway yeah it was contaminated, so they never drank it. They used to have to boil all their water and then... Right. That okay. Water. Yeah. So she got me onto, obviously, filtered water, bread water, bottled water. Ever, ever since. I've Ever since I've drank bottled water for about the past five years. Oh, wow. It's expensive. Because I, uh, I, I pay for water I, as well as water. I can imagine. I pay for double water. Yeah. I am, honestly, I've got, I've got mug written on my forehead. <laughs> Or water, but it's fine though because you got water in your mug, so it's okay. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Oh. I might even go from you know. I might even put the water in the glass to then have to wash up the glass when it's come out of a perfectly fine bottle. Well, they do say the more times you use a plastic bottle or reuse it, little parts of plastic, like the little particles, come into the water, and you end up drinking plastic. Now, I don't know how true that is. Um, I reckon to an extent we've got a lot of illnesses that we've had over the years that have got worse and worse is from our own doing the plastic waste and contaminated waste yeah but have you seen the pipes that some of the water comes to your house in 
Yeah. And don't don't your tap's so nice and clean, but if you go a bit deeper in the pipe, oh, it's all. Well, if you brown, unscrew, sludgy, if you yeah. unscrew your the end of your tap, yeah. Normally, if you've got like a little filter that makes it like yeah, come yeah, out yeah. nice, yeah. Not just a general <laughs> square. <laughs> Like, you unscrew it, there's, like, stones in it and stuff. Yeah, like the old shower heads you see up the little balls, the little brown bead balls, mm. yeah. Yeah, see, they were proven to be, like, really bad. I know, I got one of them, it did nothing. On the adverts, it was amazing, really powerful, clear water. They weren't, I bought yeah. one too, they were shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I got one from, I can't, probably a Facebook advert, fucking hell, as always. I got one from TikTok, I got one on TikTok when it first... TikTok shop first started. Oh, back in lockdown. Back in lockdown. Oh, don't just discuss that shit. <laughs> Did you know that, you know, have you watched the film E.T.? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know there was a man in that suit? Did you in know? The suit? Yes. Did you know? I found that out the other day. I was a fucking yeah. amazed. Look at that. He played E.T. There's a man, yeah. With no legs. He's got no legs, but he was in the costume. I'm so glad for it. I didn't I didn't actually know that, no. I Matthew, thought it was all... Matthew Demerit. His name is? I mean... He was, he was E.T. Let's be honest. Like, like a robot thing. He's made a lot of money out of that, that film then, because that, that film is still popular today. They're doing a remake, aren't they? More than likely. They do a remake of fucking everything now. Go get the money back out of it. Exactly. Talking of, um, like, the odd subject of graveyards we we started the show with, and burials, Mm -hmm. do you think... (laughs) This this may be fake, I don't know, but just have a look at that. Would you ever sort of do that, Niall? What is it? I can't make it out. Is that like a coffee table made of the person inside it? So yes, for the the view the listeners to this podcast, you can apparently if this is true, you can get your loved one as instead of being in a coffin, you can put them in a resin coffee table as their actual dead body. Now, would you do oh, that, Nora? No. Fuck no. Why? Do that. There's, there's Granny, look. <laughs> Stuck. Granny's on the table. Don't spill coffee on no. her. Or, you, or your pasta. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, imagine the that. kids just trying to trying to colour her in and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> granny, you're looking a bit pale there. Let's give us <laughs> drawing a fag out of her mouth. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 why? Why? People do weird shit. I know they do. What about when? What about when those people die? Those people that got those people that got put into a coffee table, one day are going <laughs> to die, and the people are going to go. I'm not having that shit in my house. Okay, what do we do with it? Tip it. Just get it to the tip. Yeah, imagine off. that. You get to tip. Say, can you come and help me, please? I got fucking my granny in the boot. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's in a coffee table. <laughs> fucking hell. She's in a coffee table. Because that's what happens with it. <laughs> I always think that about ashes. Because obviously, I know some people. I've got family members that do it, that keep ashes. They've kept yeah, yeah. them. They haven't done anything with them. They've kept them. What happens when you go? What happens when you, there's this big bot, there's this big drawer full of people's ashes? Oh, that's our Linda. That's Dave. That's fucking mm. Shirley. All right. And someone goes, well, I don't want it. And the other goes, well, I'm not having it. Okay, what do you do with it? I'd say what we'll do. We'll mix it all together, shake it up a bit, <laughs> because they're all fucking dickheads anyway. And then we'll just, you know, where would you put it? Put it on a train. Out the window. <laughs> now nah, you'll get done for flight tip. <laughs> Imagine someone else is looking out the window and they go in their face. Oh, and they, get, they, just... get, they get body dust in their... <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with it, though? You there should it, be. Or, I... you, or you intern you put... it. Yeah, but... Would you feel, would you feel, because technically, if it goes down like two generations and then you go, this is our, this is my great granddad's ashes yeah. and your new wife, your new wife goes, or new husband says, we're not having that in the house. 
would you feel comfortable scattering two generations worth of ashes somewhere who you don't even know technically you might not know yeah where would because you do if, it would you just oh it depends if there's nothing laid out in writing i want to be scattered in wherever would you just go to a nice place and do it there yeah a place a place that i enjoy going to that's peaceful and beautiful or whatever and uh, yeah, i'd I probably suppose. do that to be fair because if it hasn't been laid out then the person who's ashes it was fucked up a bit there and they get whatever they're given really because it's all there True. ready to go i think there should be like a sell by date of how long you can keep them for there should be like listen after 10 years you need to do something with them well my granddad died i think 2005 yeah he was at the co-op he was cremated left at the co-op in his big red plastic tub with ashes mm. in and then when my nan died a couple of years ago they then collected his and hers at the same time and then they went to cornwall to be scattered yeah, so, so, that's nice. so they were there fifth at least 15 16 years his were how at, long how big is the, that, how big is their storage cupboard though honestly i don't know i, don't, I didn't go and do it but but the, the plastic thing for my granddad was about that big really fat full plastic full yeah to the top you take the lid off and there's like a a clear bag yeah it's full of full of ash and bits of bone and gray stuff and now you see my nan when they collected my nan she was in a little casket so it's a bit different. There's only like a quarter of the amount of her than there was of him. And he was a bit fatter, so to be fair. My nan was I really little I, when she died. If I have to get if I have to get cremated, my plan is is I wanna be packaged up like a I wanna be packaged up like a parcel of cocaine. And then I wanna be planted on somebody I wanna be planted on someone I didn't, I didn't like. <laughs> and As just they go into a football some, stadium. <laughs> someone someone gives oh, them a, yeah someone get yeah like or do you know what i mean like i'd say i'd say something like my final wishes would be wrap me up like a parcel of cocaine and put them in my brother's hand luggage <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> sorry just, just, for sh just for shits and gigs <laughs> shout out to the podcast <laughs> shits and gigs there you go yeah massive they're selling out massive. the o2 so are we mate hey i i read yesterday that pod, apparently podcast is it podcast is now are 90 percent educational i think i think we're in that 90 percent. i think we're up there with the diary of the ceo and something else something else the, big the education of bullshit now mm -hmm. we were talking about um podcast of the week weren't we mm -hmm. and the other day when i was mowing i listened to Liam Tuff was on a podcast. Oh, we like won't, him. He's good. Who, who I like won't him. who I won't name in case people cry. And his podcast was three hours and forty five minutes long. Brilliant. Okay. Sort of me the whole morning of mowing. Fucking brilliant. You know when you get a podcast and it's like you can't you're hanging yeah, yeah. on the edge of your fucking wherever you are, waiting for the next bit of story. Now I didn't know I that his dad. Love that. His dad was Reggie Cray's bitch. He was in prison with Reggie Cray, and they reckon they were in a gay relationship. They reckon Reggie was mm -hmm. gay as well as Ronnie, mm -hmm. and he used his dad used to sexually abuse him. All his friends get him all hooked on drugs. Absolutely everything ruined marriages, made people kill themselves. This bloke is proper dirt. He got put away for eighteen years for so many different offences against his friends at school, like 14 year olds, having sex with them 15, getting them on hooked on heroin at 16, 15. And it's like, wow. It's, it's awful. Wow. This man was, and, and you, you'd never know about who, no, who was, who was this man? Liam's dad. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've heard him speak. Pete, some stuff Pille, about... Pete Gillette, his name is. Right. I never heard of him until I then till I finished what listening to it and then I went on to mm. Google and thought, Oh fucking hell, loads of stuff about it. Oh god. And it's like, Googling's wow. the worst thing Googling's the worst thing have like 
you have to do after when you when you watch something you google the real events after it like you after a film it's always more yeah, horrifying just, than the actual film it's, it's played down obviously podcast is different he's he's talking from real life events yeah but when you do it from a film's point of view you're like it oh change. shit um, it changes your perception yeah. of it's it's good to listen to podcasts but i do some some of them i do like to watch because you can see the real emotion in in the storytelling mm, i get it obviously it's not i find but I find the most random podcasts and I literally put them on and I love them. I love finding random ones that I've never watched before. Like I, I told you, didn't I, about the one, about the crime one and it was about the kid in Dubai that got caught. He got caught with like 0. 0. 0. 0.1 of a gram of cocaine in yeah, a in, bag. in a little bag in his uh, car. And I, was, and I watched yeah. it, I watched his podcast and he, he just talked about, he, all he spoke about really was his, his journey into prison in Dubai. And for me, I was like fascinated because I was like, "This is crazy! Like it's mental." But you start to create a picture I, in your in head, don't you, of what that'd be like? And yeah, what it is. I did. Yeah, that's what I did because I watched yeah. it. I watched his emotion. I watched his the video. I watched what it like he was like with his family and stuff. Yeah. But then I was like, "Oh shit! These are somebody's real life stories." And I think that's why I like obviously Liam's podcast is because. Not just true crime, but because Liam does all different. He doesn't just cover crime or gangsters or anybody. Like he covers quite a lot of people, doesn't he? He's a very positive man now. And like the Kirk one. Love the Kirk Norcross oh, one. That was that's brilliant. Awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, it it very emotional that, though as well. It did help that I'd watched Towie though, so I knew who he was and knew the family stories and a lot of the things that he was talking <laughs> about I'd seen on telly. So mm -hmm. that was a good one for me. I did enjoy that. I like him. But yeah, talking of Essex, very sad news today. The um, the stabbings this morning. Was that Essex? Was it? Was I don't thought that, I thought that was well, right. Okay, I'm sure it was Essex. They said Essex on the news, and then they did say it, it's in a diff. It's a place called. Um, where's it gone? I fucking know it was there just now. I can't remember the name of it. I read, I've seen some stuff. However, it's not been covered very well, has it? Like the publicity of it, it's not been, it's not been put out there very much. No, what it? I've seen the pitch, the video of the bloke. I've not seen the video. Yeah, before everything's on Twitter, everything's fucking uncensored on X. Um, yeah, apparently around the first phone call for a report to the police was around the seven o'clock mark this morning before seven, and basically he was in a street. This bloke. He crashed a into fucking, a house, didn't he? With a fucking knife this big, machete. It looked a bit sharp for a machete. Sam, it, was, it was a samurai Sword. thing, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And he was waiting outside people's houses for them to go to work. And he was he stabbed he stabbed people. A fourteen year old boy is now dead. Uh, two police are in surgery at the moment in hospital. And from the video I saw, yes. you see him in this street with all the police cars and that there. And there's the police just standing there and he's just like walking around with this and i'm like why are you What'd not you do? why are you not tasering but, him why are you not fucking <clears> taking this car out it's like because wow. not all not all officers carry tasers they have to have special training for tasers. i'm sorry but you know who where you're going niall <laughs> they know who they're sending to the and what's going to be there for them oh but then why is arm response not turning up then Maybe exactly it's... sorry as soon as he's there, you know he's fucking stabbing people straight to the head. <clears throat> See you later. Another problem solved for this country. This awful, awful being. Imagine you getting up ready to go work in the morning. You go from your your bedroom to your fucking living room. That's how you go work. But <laughs> sorry, I can help that one. But yeah, people are going to work in the morning. They're All right, listen. Off. I put my bins out. <laughs> okay, no, so no, you, you not, put your bins out, music, but... and there's some geezer there with a fucking sword, and he's fucking hacking you. I mean, it's it's a fucking crazy world. It's uh, it's uncomprehendable. So what I've seen is that he, apparently he he crashed a van into a house. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, is so it the same one? Or is this in Ireland? Because yeah. I saw something in Ireland as well today. No. So obviously. He crashed a van into a house, got out, and then started on a rampage. From what I heard, you said 14-year-old oh, okay. boy. I heard that. Yeah, I yeah. heard 13-year-old girl. 
died as well. No. And then obviously the two police officers I heard about. But I think the worrying part of anything like that is, is you will only be told what you're supposed to be told. Oh yeah, exactly. In terms of why it happened, what it happened. We don't know what, what reason will be put in front of it. Obviously, they said it's not terror related, which is understandable. It's one man to, person. To be honest, it didn't look from the stereotypical terror uh, angle. No, it's happened. This is so. This has happened many times. It's not just a one off. This has happened no, multiple no, no. times. It's, it's not, crazy people that are, have issues. It's nothing new. Look at no. the look at the bloke in Australia the, uh, last week. What happened in Australia? Oh, they were stabbing the, as well, weren't they? Yeah, so it was one man. Um, he was um, recluse, mental health issues. Um, basically had a desire that he'd never had a girlfriend, been totally rejected his whole life, and lived with his parents, lived with his dad, apparently. Mm. And yeah, went on, a, went on a rampage in a shopping mall in Australia. Oh, yeah, shopping mall you're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Again, it's... just went round stabbing. I mean, he, you know, he killed a three-year-old. So, you know. Yeah. See, this is what this is where I, I agree with America with the gun <sighs> thing, because if any in America, then... you're al you're allowed to protect yourself. So any yeah, any then... any passers by, I know what you're going to say. Any passers by, see. That bloke's only only stabbing one person. He ain't stabbing four or five because someone would have shot him. So that that side of it works in America. I've seen many people trying to rob shops in America, and a innocent bystander's got a, a weapon, finishes them off. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not saying that's right. I am really, but you know, it's it's a it's a difficult one because I don't disagree. I don't. I don't disagree with with that, you know, with with guns at all. But, but if you arm everybody, you're going to get dickheads who, like the knife yeah. people, they're going to have an even better job because they've got a gun, and it's going to be easier. Where do you? Okay, so... let, let's 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 put the, <laughs> let's put the gun let, let's put the guns on the table. Right. Where do you where do you stand between Trump and Biden coming back? I'm pro Trump. Trump million. I love Trump. I've always loved. Trump. I think. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna admit. Like, I am a. You know, I do think he's. He's probably getting slightly older now. You know, they they talk about Joe Biden being really old, and you know, but Trump's not that young either. Trump's in his like seventy three or whatever he is. Why do, when do they get like a when do they get like like a president or a prime minister that's you know. 35. <laughs> He's got you years. <laughs> you can't be president until you're 35 anyway. I found that out on the chase exactly. today. So, there you go. <laughs> you can't be president until you're 35. 35, no. Fuck me. Yeah. You imagine that they gave a president to a 20, 22 year old. <laughs> well, Obama wasn't that old, was he, really? He didn't look Obama. old anyway. Obama was 42, was he, when he went in? 42, 43? I don't know. He's there eight years, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah, so do you think that's, that, that's pretty young. If you're president, what do you think you're stealing on the way out on your last day? Everything, so, something, everything that's in, not something, out. something good in the Oval Office, definitely. <clears throat> but you write your name like underneath the desk. Obama was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, W O Z E R E ear. -E -E <laughs> Take the key for the red button. <laughs> See, everybody said that Trump would would create war. Yeah, he's the only president in the last thirty years not to be involved in a war when he was president. That tells you everything, yeah. I think. Biden's been at war he's, with. He's very likable to an extent, isn't he? He's very he's very hands on as well with what he does. Like, yes. All the things that have said and everything that he's gone through. If you can like, put, if think... you can forget about the stupid comments he makes when his brain don't work, some some of mm. the sexist remarks, the stupid things he does, then he's a very good president. 
He has a lot of following. I didn't realise how much following he has. Wherever, wherever he goes in America, he still gets like the seven cars or the police everywhere. They treat him like he's still president. Although you you have to call him President Trump still because he's he's had a term in office, so mm. he will always be President want... Trump. But isn't it funny as Brits we um, we take we take on America as our our neighbours as as we're part of it. Well, we know? ain't got a choice, have we? Really, we ain't it's got no one else that likes us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, they they could they could build a bridge or drag us a bit closer. You know, we could get the decent weather. Although I've been rope. seeing like Hurricanes. I've been seeing like t- t- tornado after tornado. Tornado. I love t- I love tornadoes. I, f- I no one should say that, but I okay, I no. love watching them. I, oh, I, honestly, cool, there should be something called Tornado Hub. Okay. <laughs> you, have, you have storm chasers, don't you? People that go around their yeah. trucks and they try and get I'd, as close oh. and film it on YouTube and everything. I'd jizz over that. I'd fucking jizz on that. I'd love to go fucking storm chasing. <laughs> like you, we ghost hunting. I think, oh, mate, just the thrill. Can you imagine going? It was when I seen the film Twister as a kid. Oh, yeah, right? to, I've seen that. Yeah, it's a great film. Helen and they, Hunt and they were tr- Bill Paxton. Yeah. They were tracking They were tracking down tornadoes. I just thought, Not this Bill is Paxton. fucking awesome. Yeah. However, I just... I didn't realise how common they are in America. They they are like I always thought the storm shelters you would, would have been those things that they never use. Turns out they use them quite a lot, especially on the the Florida side and mm-hmm. the, the deep south. I don't know why people like you've been there, haven't you? I don't know why people would live there. It must be so cheap because you know your house is going to get attacked what, at least once a year, and you probably it's don't not cheap. Enough. That's the difference. It's not That's cheap. That. That just amazes me. People, do people not live in Florida? They just visit. Is that when it happens? Is that what happens? They, yeah, or they work. Oh, they work. So I remember, I remember we spoke to some, we went to something called um, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah, yeah, I've been to that in Blackpool. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. I went, I went in Florida, mate. So you know, oh. wasn't fucking, wasn't Blackpool. Anyway, but we spoke. <laughs> I remember we remember. <clears throat> Excuse me. Me and my wife had the, um, you know, the wax dip in for your hands. Yes. We had that done. Anyway, I was talking to the woman there. We were saying, like, you know, she used to work at Disney, but the pay is absolutely terrible. So now she's come out of Disney and she has three, she has to have three different, no, when she was at Disney, she had to have three different jobs just to, just to be able to live. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's fucking terrible. So but a lot of tourism them have mo- there, then. It's all tourism yeah, in Florida, then. then. A lot of them have multiple, you know, sources of income, multiple yeah, jobs. Yeah. They, you know, they'll go from a restaurant to a bar to this to a petrol station, aren't they? Yeah. Because like, li- living, yes, to buy things seems to be cheaper, but to live, it isn't cheap. Do you think Americans are more patriotic than the English? <sighs> Fuck yeah. Absolutely. Brit- Britain's patriotic. Britain's patriotic when we've won three games at the Euros. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not a thing. Have you seen? Have you seen what England fans are like when they lose? When they lose a World Cup game, that's it. They're gone. They yeah, always they, say, they, "Oh, they'll never." They go home and beat their wives up. That's what they do. <clears throat> I, I was going to say, what about when the um, the lionesses won? How would that was rarely celebrated? It wasn't celebrated. Why was that, that not seen? I watched watch that it? final. As well, yeah. I hadn't watched the other games. No, but who would have, who would have said? Who would have said? Like, do you know what? We're going to take this one as a victory as a country. That these women did it. These women fucking did it. No one, no Sh- one. showed the men how to do like, it in pain. about in about ten years of practicing. No one. That's. I mean, that's patriotism. No matter what it is, is you represent your country and you are proud of who you stand for. Yeah. But then, fuck me. I mean, look at look at St George's Day, for example. St George's Day now is rarely. You get more people selling celebrating St Patrick's Day who aren't even Irish than you do St. Because St George St George's Day is not attached to anything. That's the problem. It's not it, celebrated in a way that it. it... Firstly, St George was Turkish. <laughs> if you go, mm-hmm. if you actually go back and do your research he was he was a turk 
and so it wasn't even English <laughs> so you know but watching the St George's Day parade the other week well it was the last week wasn't it 23rd the fact that we are not allowed as a country as a people of our, of our country we are not allowed to celebrate and cheer on whatever be positive about our country wave our flag spend time with friends you know because it's just a, seen as negative that's all it is there was there was a march in london and the police turned out like they were fucking killing kids they were attacking everybody they weren't allowed to march there was no trouble until the met arrived and all the other pro marches that we have for religious things uh, other cultural things in london that's allowed there's no trouble with the police just let them do what they want they put flags everywhere they no i'm not going to name anything because that'll be silly of me um but the fact that the england flag in england on england's day is not allowed absolutely baffles me and that is what is wrong with this country and in within 10 years this country will not be england anymore it will not be great britain it's not anymore anyway um, and i will be in fucking wales living because this country is already in the shit we, we're not allowed to do anything if if anything that we want to do as traditional people um it's seen as negative or oh, you can't do that we're oppressed in our own country and i think you go to other countries, Poland, Russia even, Norway, they have their rules, their country, their their national stuff, whatever, I know, I know what I'm trying to say. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're proud of their country, their heritage, whatever. And, and they celebrate it. There's never any problems. But in England, you're not allowed. And I just think, like, that's like being in Ireland and they want to do a... Paddy's Day parade and all the celebrating. You think the police would stop that? No fucking way. Same as St Andrew's Day in Scotland. No, I don't really know if they do anything in Scotland about that. I'm sure you have people to bagpipes out, maybe. I don't yeah, know. I think the problem is with it is is that it's the flag is seen I, as a negative racial yeah, thing, isn't it? but also it draws in it draws in negative attention. I think that's the biggest the biggest part of it is the fact that. You know, with the past two years, and I'm not talking, there has been marches for everything. And you can't even just put it on one thing. There's been marches for absolutely everything. Yeah. And it's only, unless you're there, it's only portrayed to you as a good thing or as a bad thing or everything went fine or it didn't. Yeah. Right? You're only going to be fed what you're fed. Like Exactly, yeah. The St. Saint, George, Saint I, I didn't see much of it. I've seen little bits of it on TikTok and whatever. But you're going to be fed negative press because it's going to surround itself with football hooligans, England flag, Big. Stone Island, Stone <laughs> Island and cocaine. Do you know what I mean? Like, but, but that's how they will sell it to you. They'll sell it to you as bunch of bunch of thugs hit London, hit the streets. Do you know what I mean? And unless you're there, it's only going to be sold to you as it is. But also, I think. Negative energy draws in negative people, you know, I, I, I can't sometimes, I mean, sometimes I go to the comments before I even watch the video because I know what's about to happen. Yeah. And normally nine times out of 10, the ones, the people that are saying completely inappropriate things are the ones with no picture and no username. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah we ignore like, them. Yeah, but what you're saying there like, with the with the negativity, it draws negativity. People see this, so the next time there's a march, they're pissed off because they can't celebrate their own country. And then more people are going to go mm. who are potentially angry already because they want to be proud and they want to be able to do something that every other sort of cultural or organisation want that is allowed to do it in our country, but we're not so therefore that's going to feed the negativity more people are going to turn up because they're angry and they they want to say no you can't do this this is us this is our country we're proud of our country and we want to celebrate our country and it's, then, it, it just creates it, a big ball of shit doesn't it yeah exactly exactly you are literally 
the problem is is you are creating a pile on top of a pile and it, eventually it'll be like i mean let's be honest everybody whoever's had marches honestly what has it done for anybody what has it fucking done Nothing. i mean i agreed with the far I, I i agreed with the farmers in France, who literally sprayed the entire streets of Paris and shit. shit. <laughs> I agree with that. And then they blocked the channel tunnel. That's what they did. They, they tried to block it. Yeah. They they literally went into the centre of France and they sprayed every yeah, government yeah. building in fucking Mignon. Why? Because you're literally undercutting them. You're taking yeah. their entire livelihood and fucking taking it out of their hands. Was that fucking only French? That. Was that right. only French farmers? I'm not sure on the whole. Because I know they were doing they it. were doing stuff in our country as well, weren't they? In England, I'm sure the farmers yeah, yeah. were doing. They were starting off in Cornwall and heading up, and there was probably stuff in Wales and up north. I just north. I find it I find it baffling that how companies will literally try and undercut the food supply. Test it's like what we know about. Hold on. No, but it's like hold on a second. Hold on a exactly. second. Yeah. Literally, you've got you've got you've got like companies out there going, yeah, we'll pay billions to put you know invest in your tech and and everything that you do, but yet the people that literally pull the carrots out of the ground that we need, to eat, fucking, yeah. everything that we give, everything that we every food that we get from the every one of these farmers, and they try to undercut them is fucking mm. mental. I, I would like you'll never, put money. I would never be a farmer. It's just I've I've seen people in the news, and I know people that have known farmers or been farmers, and they end up killing they, themselves. Most of them, exactly. They work like eighteen hours a day. They don't have any wage for themselves, and they get paid like a few times a year. And when the whole crop there's, and the, there's no time. There's no time off. No time off. Exactly. As a farmer, and you're always preparing the land or harvesting or taking it to to market or selling it to whoever. And like I say, they're always undercut. And it's crazy. It's but not people, something I'd want to do. People will invest in, you know, like people will invest in the wrong countries will invest in tech or clothing or, you know, fashion brands or, you know, apps and websites. But yet they won't protect the water and the food company. Like there was this whole, that whole thing about Anglian water and, you know, what's in the water and how, you know, their, um, their bonuses. Okay. Like, however... Basically, what they're saying now is that for the amount of water that's needed for the country, Britain is too full. They can't meet the demands in terms of the amount of water that's needed to be filtered, to be cleaned, to pass, to be safe for everybody to consume it. Not just, I don't know how the fucking how every water board and company works. Yeah. But basically, they're saying that obviously, for, for the, the infrastructure that's needed is probably going to cost way up there within the billions right to check to make it safer for everybody to consume okay they're not doing that they're not going to put that money into that infrastructure to make the water safe of course they're not like what what happens when the water is just too contaminated what just think about it yeah what you do you like, import water and you but you go costco and buy your water <laughs> and the price shoots up no but yeah. just general just general living right you, you cooking, want to go for a shower. Brushing your teeth, shower, yeah. shitting, flushing toilet. Yeah. Because basically that's what they're saying because of all the waste as well. So not only is it the clean water that we need, but it's too, it's the amount of people that are in the UK now. It's basically, it's too many people to basically, for these systems to operate the way they were because these systems are 50, 60, 70 years old. And back when, obviously, there was a lot less population. Like the NHS. The NHS struggles. Because there's too many people in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I've seen a too many people. I've seen a video. I've seen a video, and it was an elderly gentleman, and he waited nine weeks, nine weeks to go and see his GP for an infection. I'm sure he cleared up by then. Oh, his leg fell off. Nine, nine weeks. He had to wait to go and see a GP. That's yeah. It's fucking crazy. It's 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 just one of those things that I think pisses people off is the fact that yeah, you you know, there's always a problem if you want to be patriotic, there's always a problem if you want to be proud of where you come from. It it's no it just never ends well. 
It never no. like I don't think. But then, do people look at do people look at Britain like they used to from outsiders? I'd love to know. I'd love to know what because Americans used to think Britain was like the best thing since sliced bread. Like coming over. Like I, I, if I wasn't British, I, my plan would never be to come here. <laughs> no. Unless you're like royal families that hate each other. Yeah. I know. <laughs> hate each other or, or worse. I think the royal family ended when the Queen died, personally. Until William's yeah. in power, I think it will, it will take an upturn. But I think now with all the People are fed up stuff, with it, though. the Charles stuff. Yeah. It's, do you know what it is? It's, it's more of like a... It's more of like a TV show, isn't it? Really? It is. Yeah. It's, but it is. It's, it's called it's the Crown. It's <laughs> yeah, <good>. exactly. <laughs> it's the thing is the Crown should do weekly episodes like Coronation Street with all their latest news because yeah, honestly, the problem, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, but people are fed up with it now because it used to be something to be. It was grand. It had stature to it. It was. It was. It was important. It was appropriate for your country to be like, yeah, this is our royal family. This is what we are proud of. But I then, think the world, the world respected the Queen very much with her stability, how she acted with other countries, how she was. And I think, like I said, it's, it sort of died a bit when she went. Hmm. No, it did. It did. You're absolutely Charles, right. Of Charles has got the reputation with the whole Diana thing and back in the day and people that, some people don't like Charles because of that. So there's lots of things. The fact he's now poorly, he might not last long. Depends on how his treatment goes. You know, it's just there's so much of it. Like, yeah. But the thing is, it's not had a chance to change. That's the problem. He hasn't been. No. I mean, he's been doing stuff, but you know, it nothing it, major, not is chance. it? That, that you've seen. There's not been a chance for it to, it to take effect. No, I think but he's then... been sorting out his health. To be fair. That's important, absolutely. Exactly, but, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. Do you think he should, I don't know. he should abdicate and let William take over? But he'd have to leave the country then. I don't. To be honest, like, I think, like, you were right in what you first said. It all finished when she died. Yeah. And that's, that, for me, that's it. For me, that I, I let him crack on with it. But then my philosophy now is to literally just face forward i'm not i can't i can't be phased by shit anymore i really i because do you know what it is for me is no matter what your opinion is or what you want to do you're either clapping or having a wank sounds weird scratching my wrist you know what it is you can't change nothing you can't change no. it no I, I can moan about my wages not being enough to keep up with the cost of living and they might bump my wages up slightly so I can just keep my head here. Like, because honestly, that is li literally, that is where I'm at. Like, my wages are here. The cost of living's here. Right? And at the end of it, it's like, it's just impossible. Yeah. You can't, you can't go to a healthcare provider. You can't get an NHS dentist. Okay. Fuel is through the roof. You've got no chance of buying a new car. You can't go on holiday anymore because if you want to go on holiday during term time, it's going to cost you about four grand. Four grand, we quoted the other day, for a week in Tenerife. Four grand. Would you rather pay the £120 each fine? That's going yeah, up gone to two and a half six... grand. No, it's gone up from two and 60 half... to 120 quid. And eventually, it will be £2,000 fine for each right. parent. But yeah, I would. 100%. I agree with every single... I agree with every single parent that takes their child out of school to spend time with them and do something. Because I tell you what, during any holiday break to go anywhere, it's full. You have to yeah, book yeah. months in advance, and you're going. It's going to cost you a fortune. And I get it; these companies love it, you know. However, I agree. If you want to take your kid out on holiday and give them one of the best weeks of their life, fucking do it. I'm going to keep doing it. Until it goes to two grand, fine. <laughs> Until it goes to two grand. And it's like, fuck it. Go to school. I'll go on my own. <laughs> no, I, I think it's bollocks. I think it's fucking bollocks. Like, your kids can get a lot of education from their parents as well. 
depends what holiday you give them if you go to say like a city or something and you've got all that architecture the museums everything they could be learning depending on their age obviously they could be and learning, what learning about shit. what good? if you know what if i don't know what what if my child was learning about the romans and i took her to rome Pfft, can't get better than, than that can you can't learn a textbook like you'd, you'd be like well it's friday afternoon we'll we'll leave We'll leave at lunchtime. We'll be back for Sunday. You only need the flights like an hour and a half. Yeah. Like cheap flights all the time to Italy. Yeah. Like, That's a good yeah. Idea. Do you know what? Fuck it. Take your kids out. I'll take your kids out of school. Like, <laughs> the problem is it isn't teachers. Like, you know, these te- the te- I know the teachers there because you yeah, have teachers get loads of time off. Yeah, but they're not. They're not they've off, got the same. Off. They're not off though. They they're not. They're still they've got they're preparing the, same the new you. terms, aren't they? Work. But then yeah, work ready. Just, if you think about it, look at the wages of things like people that hold the country together. Their wages are the worst, you know. And I'm talking the real people. I'm not talking, you know. I'm talking, you know. You looked at a bin man. <laughs> oh, fuck off, fucking baristas. <laughs> Oh, God. Not anymore. I don't go the Costa pro- anymore. It's too expensive. It's gone up again. Fuck that. The gen- the thing is, the next generation of people to come up, they're going to be so self-entitled that they should be given everything and they will have no go-get attitude to go and get it. No. They will They will think, I deserve this. I should I know get it. How m- I know how much bin men get because they've just had their increase. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's not a lot, though, for what they do. It is, you know, it's it's well, but it's not any jobs. I don't know how how much you think they get. How much do you get? (laughs) (laughs) Fucking not what big men get, I tell you. (laughs) Mate, anyway, listen, let's listen, let's 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 give Mickey a shout. We're all poor, that's what we can say. We're fucking poor. (laughs) At the end of this show, everybody, let's give Mickey a shout out personally for covering over 53 miles last week. 53 miles. I've done. How did you track? I've done 30 miles yesterday and today so far. How are you tracking? On my Fitbit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's have a look. See, I might have to. Thing is, I can't really get a Fitbit. It's easy. I'll show you on on the app because it's a bit small. My watch. So fifty three miles in a week. That that's that's some. So can you see that? Yeah. Sixteen miles wow. today. That's how many wow. steps I've done. That's seriously impressive. Sixteen miles. Sixteen miles yesterday. So that's thirty two miles so far in two days. How how much are you mowing? Just walking around the yard. Our cemetery is big. So it's not like I'm walking in a straight line for fucking miles and miles. It's going back feel... and forth, back and forth like this, round graves, all this stuff. So Do you feel that you've cemetery, walked that far? Yeah, my feet hurt every day. It's like, oh, they feel like they've been slapped with fishes. <laughs> have you have you dropped a lot of weight? No. No. Yeah, but no. It's, it's, it's your fitness, it's, isn't it? It's, your... it's my fitness, yeah. Mm. So... I'm on to smash that Good for you. this week. <laughs> Let's see if we can get to 60 miles next week. <sighs> yeah. So, Listen, guys, thanks for joining us on another fantastic show, Dad, lads, and Babs. <laughs> we love speaking to you. This was actually yeah. a really good episode. So if you have anything to say about our show, if you want to talk to us about any of the subjects we talked about, please get in touch. Yes. Um, if you want to feature on the show, let us know, because we'd love to have somebody on. And... I think sometimes you can get a little bit heated in terms of things that we discuss. We're friends, so we will discuss it all day long. But to have somebody else and actually say, actually, no, we, I don't feel that way. We would love to have a bit of a debate and discussion. I think that's the new feature of podcast is this debate. I'd love to have a row with someone on air. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I, think, I think if we found the right subject, we could fucking we could have a row. But anyway... Guys, thanks for joining us. Another great show. Peace out, everybody. Deuces and fuck off. Oh, shit, I got to turn it off.